Now, in this example, without the conversation in the back, which don't worry, we will have some new seats, so I'll be able to take care of it. So, um, in the if you guys look at this example, a little bit, the only difference between this example and the one before is now my absolute value quantity is being multiplied by three and it's being subtracted by one. I didn't write down a process, um, which maybe maybe we should write down a process for you guys. Um, but basically, actually, yeah, we do have a process, so I'm going to have to go over that. So I'll write down the process here um, after I do this video. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do is isolate the absolute value. You guys can see this absolute value is being multiplied by 3 and subtracted by 1. We want to undo that. We cannot create two cases until we isolate the absolute value. So the first thing you're going to want to do is always undo addition and subtraction, just like solving an equation. So therefore, I have 3 absolute value of x plus 2 equals 9. Everybody follow? Then we undo multiplication. So now I have absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 3. Okay. Now, now we create our two cases. We say x plus 2 is equal to 3, and x plus 2 is equal to negative 3. Then we just go ahead and solve. Negative 2, negative 2, subtract 2, subtract 2. And we have x equals um, 1, and x equals negative 5. Now what we can do is we can go back and plug in our answers. You can go back into the original equation, but do you guys see how much like work that is? So you can also go back into this one where it's isolated, which I prefer. I, whenever I'm checking my answers, I always want to plug it into the equation where my absolute value is isolated. One, it's less work. And two, it's easier to kind of understand. So when we plug this in, plug in 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Absolute value 3 is 3. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Absolute value negative 3 is 3. So both of them check out. Any questions so far? Are we bored yet? 